Hello friends, it's been a while since I published a video due to the issues introduced by SimUpdate 5. I was also one of you who was struggling with the crash to desktops, graphical degradation and other things. I spent a lot of time researching, trying and uh, looking to find the perfect balance between quality and performance also looked into ways to fix the issues mainly the overexposure that was introduced by sim update 5 where everything was looking so bright to the rendering distance where the distant objects were looking much more blurrier and when you are up in the air the ground texture is not looking that great three the colors and four fixing the crash to the desktops and increasing and optimizing the performance of my graphics card as much as possible. My PC uh, specs are in the video description for those of you who are interested, but I am running an i5-9600K processor with 32GB of RAM and an old graphics card, a GTX 1070 Ti. My SIM is installed in an M.2 SSD which uh, helps with the loading times but it's at best I can say a medium uh, spec PC. Today I wanted to share you my research and what I did to fix the issues and show you maybe a different uh, way than what everybody is doing with the user opts user configuration.opt file and changing some settings in there. I made some changes to that file as well, but I was able to find another way to tweak these settings with the NVIDIA control panel for those of you who are running NVIDIA cards. So without further ado, let's start step by step what I did and I will share my graphics settings in the simulator as well uh, at some point. I started with um, configuring the user user options CFG. I will bring that to here here in a second. It is this file right here can be found under this path which I will put on the screen for you for ease of access. My sim is installed in a separate drive and it is through marketplace. So if you are using the Steam copy you need to find where this file is because I don't know where it is. I started with the editing this file and I'm gonna share what I did and try to explain what each setting here does. When you open the file you'll see something like this which displays your graphics card and then some settings like resolution and so on and so forth. What we are focusing here is because my uh, PC monitor is not HDR capable, it's turned off. Ray tracing, people have some uh, advice about this, claiming that it's fix fixing some of the stuff. I am not a believer of those uh, statements. Plus, my graphics card is not an RTX, so ray tracing pretty much does nothing for me, so I just left it as is. What I changed here is, down below, where it says post process. I turned color grading from 1 to 0, which means it's turning it off, as well as film grain from 1 to 0 to turn it off to help with uh, pixelation of the clouds, especially the distant ones. I haven't touched sharpen. There are some advices people are giving. Change the sharpen settings so that um, your uh, clouds are not pixelated and uh, you don't get uh, noise but it comes at a sacrifice and that sacrifice is losing the detail I will put some photos here that will show you sharpen on and off that I took screenshots and we will take a look at that together to see if that's something you would per try and make zero or keep as one to keep the details. 
I will put the photo first where sharpen is off. So this is where sharpen and color grading is off. And when you look at the trees, the close ones and the distant ones, they don't have that, uh, too much detail. They are kind of blurred. Uh, they don't look that good, in my opinion. Okay. The other photo that I can share here is the one that has sharpen on. It is it is not the same weather. I think I have another one with the same weather with I can which I can put here here in a second. If I can find it. Let's see here. Just trying to go through the photos. There we go. Okay. This is better. Let's get rid of this photo. Put this one here. So this is with sharpen turned off. Okay, and color grading off. So it looks a little bit hazy. It might be the effect of um, color grading. I didn't touch it. I did touch it. I did turn it to zero. It helps with uh, oversaturations. And rather overexposure, I'm sorry. Uh, but it comes at a cost, I believe, at least in my experience. The next photo I will put here is going to be sharpen on and color grading on. So the colors look more vibrant. And as you see the trees from pretty much the same angle, they are a little bit more detailed. Even this uh, horizon, you see the detail a little bit better then you see it over here. So this is the old one with sharpen off. This is sharpen on, color grading on. So you may select what you want to do from there. But I kept color grading off uh, for a reason and I will share that under Nvidia settings. So this is all I did for the user configuration.opt file. I haven't touched anything else. Next thing I did was to play with the NVIDIA control panel settings. I will share them with you here in a setting. second. You can do this two ways. I changed the global setting to make this uh, same for each and every game I play. But you can also go to the program settings and change it for just Microsoft Flight Simulator. This is up to you. Both ways works. If you don't want this to affect your other games, you can just specifically do these settings for Microsoft Flight Simulator or you can make it the global setting and this will uh, this will work for all the games you you play I didn't make too much changes here uh, too many changes here I selected my GPU for the NVIDIA uh, OpenGL rendering instead of auto select I selected what I have under power management I selected maximum performance maximum performance for the refresh rate, I selected highest available. Shader cache is on. Texture, texture filtering negative LUT bias is a low. Texture filtering quality is high quality. Threaded optimization is auto. Triple buffering off and vertical sync off. These are the only changes I made to the 3D settings. Aside from that, instead of playing with sharpening, you can also Turn off the sharpening and use this image sharpening option here to sharpen what you see a little bit if that's something you like so that your clouds doesn't look that grainy but you still have sharpening. This is up to you but I'd like to use it uh, in the user configuration.opt file. Okay. The other thing I did here is under adjust Desk desktop color settings. See here. When you first open this, the brightness will be 50%, the gamma will be 1, and the digital vibrance will be 50. This is the default setting. I dropped the brightness to 40, left the contrast where it is, and bumped the gamma up to 1.1. This way I can get a little bit better lighting without overexposure. Plus this digital vibrance, if I move my drone camera just a little bit up, look at these trees. 
as I play with the digital vibrance. This will make the colors more saturated and more vibrant. And when you pass a certain point, they become unrealistic. So I'm gonna go 50 from 50 to 60. You see the changes. When you pass 60, it starts to get starts to look a little bit unnatural from my opinion you might want to bump this up if you like vibrant colors I'd, I'd like to keep this uh, around 50 55 that's what, uh, what what my personal preference is I'm gonna cancel this so that it goes back to the original settings I said so I was keeping it at 40, even 45 below 50 this to me looks more natural so these are the two things I played with to improve the visual quality of the sim. Okay. Aside from that, I'm gonna go and share my graphics settings. After sim update 5, even if we had so many problems, I was able to bump my graphic settings, most of them, to ultra. Okay. This was not possible before with my 1070 Ti, before sim update 5. Sim update 5 made it possible. And at the end I'm gonna share my frame rates with you so that you have an idea what a 1070 Ti can pull off in Microsoft Flight Simulator. Let's go to the options and take a look at the graphic settings. Uh, resolution 2K. Render scaling, I didn't play with this. Vertical sync is on to limit the frames and the frame rate limit, rate limit I put 60 I never get to 60 FPS by the way HDR is disabled because I don't have a, a monitor that's capable of HDR and this is showing custom because I played with these settings and tell you thing, same TAA terrain level of detail from 100 I was able to bump it to 180 I can go all the way up to 200 but I think this is the perfect balance for my graphic cards. Terrain ve vector data is ultra. Buildings trees ultra. Grass and bushes I left it at high. Because you don't see them in high detail when you are up in the air. So it was fine by me. Objects level of detail I bumped it to 180. It makes the objects a little bit more detailed. Clouds at high. There is really not too much difference between high and ultra for me when I think about how many frames I'm sacrificing and we can take a look at it together. Texture resolution at ultra. Anisotropic filtering is at 16x. Texture super sampling as far as I learned from my research this is broken with sim update 5 and they will be fixing this. This has little to no effect right now. Texture synthesis is at ultra. Water waves I'm happy with medium. Shadow maps, I'm happy with the default setting uh, under high end settings, which is 1536. Terrain shadows, I bumped it from 512 or 512 to 1024. Windshield effects, ambient occlusion, windshield effects ultra, ambient, ambient occlusion is broken right now. It doesn't do anything, it's turned off by mistake. With some update 5, they will be bringing this back either with world update 6 or with the hotfix they are announced to release uh, either Friday or next Monday we'll see about that when it when even when it changes reflections ultra light shafts at high bloom on depth of field depth of field high depth of field is only available with the drone camera you don't get it with the cockpit camera so there is no need to make it ultra unless you are taking screenshots to post or save that's up to you motion blur high is fine with me lens correction is off lens flare is on and refresh rate of the glass cockpit is set to medium so that's all the settings i have and i'm gonna display my frame frame rate over here at the bottom corner you are now seeing it I'm getting close to 29, 30 FPS. It depends. I sometimes go up to um, 30. I sometimes go up to 35. Sorry. 
and in the cockpit it's a little bit better it gets close to 40 or 35 so it's playable it's perfectly fine 29 30 fps for me in the simulator it's fine the only problem i am having is when i switch wheels from outside to inside it loads for a quick split second that's about it but i am happy with this and even turning on the screens will not impact too much which we can try and you can take a look at it for yourself see i'm still getting 32 33 frames per second i can bump the brightness up and it will not make too much difference in in terms of frames I'm gonna try to add some lights for you to see. And there's brightness settings down below here, which we can also play with and see the result. So this, I think, looks okay to me. I can still go and play with the uh, with the settings here to make it a little bit better maybe just you know, drop the brightness and bump the contrast to get a little bit more saturated colors and maybe go up on the gamma a little bit this is personal preference so you need to play to find your perfect balance and what you like but this is for now working for me I might as well keep it here and maybe just bump this to 50 so that the, the trees look a little bit more greener and vibrant like so. I think I'm gonna keep it like this and apply these settings. Just a little bit less gamma. Maybe 55 on the contrast. So you can play with this. They announced that they will be bringing in um, a brightness slider or personal preference in the world update 6 so when that comes you don't even need to play with the nvidia control panel settings but with this setup in a heavy airport i was able to get 30 frames with almost ultra settings with a 1070 ti so this is what i wanted to share with you guys and as you see as i switch wheels it just loads for a split second but i am fine with that I wanted to put this quick video out for those of you who are still trying to find the perfect balance and where all the uh, guides on YouTube or what has been posted so far from what I saw is going around the same settings in user uh, configuration.opt. So I wanted to go through the NVIDIA control panel settings and give you some more options to do tweak your graphics settings. I hope you guys liked the video while you are here. Uh, if you did, please give me a thumbs up and if you are not a subscriber, please subscribe to the channel and turn on the notifications to get notified for future videos. I will be posting videos, I know I am behind because of the issues I was having. Uh, I have another episode of the C6 tutorial that I need to publish and I want to look into the new version of Salty Mod in 747 and do a test flight again. To see what has changed so there are a lot of changes in the simulator happening quite fast and unfortunately i don't have enough time to keep up with everything that's changing around microsoft flight simulator until next video take care of yourself and i will see you in the next video